little intro music here. Okay, that's enough of that. I believe it was Wendell Wilkie who used to read from the newspapers, and instead of writing his own news script, he wrote directly, he read directly from printed newspapers back in the 1940s. So, with my morning MPR radio voice for Mark Public Radio, here's a great article in yesterday's Portland Tribune. I'll try and read succinctly, undubiously. Lawyers say no to increased secrecy. Disciplinary rule changes won't serve public good, Barr says. Controversial changes that would have reduced public transparency and made it harder to go after bad or unethical attorneys were decisively rejected by Oregon State Bar on Friday. The board, or the board overseeing Oregon Lawyers Group panned much of the work of a committee that met for a year but was criticized as being more about lawyer self-protection than public protection. In a nearly three-hour meeting, the Oregon State Bar's governing board voted down many of recommendations billed as overhauling the process by which the group investigates and sanctions law. Boy, this is really broken up because the paragraph is split into a very narrow and the words have hyphenated uh, breaks in them and sanctions lawyers that lie, provide poor representation, or steal their clients' money. Supporters had said the changes would streamline the process and improve fairness, but critics said many of the changes would undermine public protection and confidence in the system. The bar, which doubles as a professional association and de facto state oversight agency, is among the most public in the country letting consumers have nearly complete access to disciplinary files. The bar's board elected to keep it that way, unanimously rejecting two rules that would have destroyed disciplinary records after three years and cloaked pending complaints in secrecy. We have been lauded through the nation for the transparency of our process, said Guy Greco, a Newport lawyer. By extension, he added, some of the other professional boards in Oregon should follow our lead and become as transparent as we have been. This continues on an inside page, but other than my morning voice, for years I've heard uh, people, famous people, doing impersonations and impressions. And when I went to act on a movie set a few years ago, the movie Into the Wild, directed by Sean Penn, I couldn't wait to see William Hurt and Marsha Gay Harden sitting in this scene, in the opening scene I was just a few feet away from. And I had just heard Kevin Spacey on Terry Gross's Fresh Air show imitating famous people. And Spacey did one of an example of the way people are trained to speak in the movies. And this happened to be Spacey imitating William Hurt. William Hurt, he seems to labor every word he speaks from the script. He's, Hurt speaks in kind of a monotone cadence. And uh, unlike other actors that are trained in its method acting or speaking, but I think of these fast staccato deliveries, kind of like uh, Howard Cosell, the sports announcer. Look at him running up and down the court like a monkey. Or uh, Regis Philbin, the famous announcer. I said to my wife last night, Joy, Jesus Christ Almighty, Joy. And they both had that same delivery like Cary Grant has, that Judy, Judy, Judy. Well, of course I love you. What do you want me to say? But that's a style of delivery that is made for movies and drama. It's not for radio announcing or news reading. So because of my deep voice in the morning, people have said, wow, you've got a great voice. Or women will always say, I could listen to you talk all night long. All right, of course, I'll talk all night long. Um, but it's not the kind of voice that, uh, because I'm in the vocal range, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to sing like Joni Cash or Jim Morrison, which I can imitate, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, so I'm thinking of other radio announcers I like to listen to for years. Larry King has that deep radio voice. Oh, you're up on Open Line America, go ahead. This is Larry King on Open Line America. And pranksters would call in and play recordings on his show. There was one one night I thought it was FDR calling in. Larry, I've been observing you for the past several weeks and I see no evidence of mental illness. Well, oh, thank you very much. I need to hear that. Go ahead. You're an open line, America. Well, well, it's just another thing. It's just a boy. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I need to hear that. Go ahead. You're an open line, America. This is Larry King live. 
but those people's voices uh, are well known because of their style, because of their, their pitch and waver in the way they speak. I think of announcers that I, people like, uh, I'll turn around and do faces. And now it's time for a word from our sponsors. Just look at this marquee cut. Wouldn't this look lovely on your sweetheart for Valentine's Day? I'm Tom Shane and you have my name on it. I send all my diamond buyers to Antwerp every year to hand select all of my diamonds. I have a very large selection. And then his announcer would come on. Now you have a friend in the diamond business, Tom Shane, the Shane Company at Shaneco.com. Open 24 hours a day. Call them now. Call them anytime. We can't give them away. But anyway, so enough of that. And uh, I've got to go get some coffee next door. Oh, I've got to finish reading the paper here, too. Take that with me. For NPR Radio, Mark Public Radio, good night and good luck.